Praise the Lord indeed. Thank you, thank you, Sister Ko, yes. for allowing the Lord to use you to, to bless our hearts today in, in songs of praise and meditation. Amen. We want to proceed quickly today with our scripture text taken from Matthew chapter 19. But read in your hearing earlier, and I just want to read uh, beginning at verse 20. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept for my youth. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect. Go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. I want to speak today on the topic, why does Seventh-day Adventists fail to have assurance of salvation. Speak to us now, Lord, as we open your word. Grant us your Holy Spirit and take full control now of the atmosphere in this place, of the words of my mouth, of the meditation of my heart. Speak now for we are listening in Jesus' name. Keep me in prayer, folks. I must be allergies that I've been suffering with, like some of you this week. <clears throat> but for some reason, it just seemed to be itching my throat right now. <clears throat> I trust it's, that, it's not, that it is not nervousness as it was experienced by our dear brother Emmanuel two Sabbaths ago. <laughs> so keep me in prayer. <laughs> this week I call my, my brother uh, Wayne just to see how he was doing because I heard that he and his wife came down with corona. Uh, to my amazement, he not only confirmed it, but he also shared with me that his wife is presently in the hospital experiencing low oxygen level. She had been there two weeks now, he said, but thank God she is She's doing better. Amen. She's not out of the woods yet, he said. But she's doing better. Amen. Some days are better than others. What was also amazing or surprising is that my brother could not understand how on earth they both came down with the virus and on the same day. He stated that they were amongst the most careful people in the world to avoid getting the corona. Uh, they did everything according to the book to prevent, to protect themselves. Everyone around them were tested regularly. So how? How on earth did this happen? I asked him if he had taken the vaccine. 
Yes, he said, they both had taken the first shot. See, he, he went on to state, this reminds me of salvation. You can do everything, but still end up in the second resurrection. You can still end up lost, even though you did everything. So, so I may as well go out and enjoy my life. <laughs> we both laughed when he said that. Mm -hmm. Because we knew that he was, he was not serious. <laughs> Nevertheless, there was a sadness in my heart streaming from those words. They, they say that behind every jest, there is some truth. And what is true about those words is that it's not only him, my brother, but many, if not nearly all Seventh-day Adventists, fail to have assurance of salvation. That is what he was communicating. We fear that in spite of all our doing, we may end up in the second resurrection. Is this the way God wants us to live? In fear of the judgment? In fear that we may be lost? The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 19, If in this life only we have hope, then we are of all men most miserable. Does God want us to live like this? Miserable? Because we have no assurance of salvation? Should we then eat, drink and play for tomorrow we die? Psalms chapter 3 and verse 8 tells us that salvation belongs to God. Jonah 2 and verse 9 tells us that salvation comes from the Lord. Salvation is not our doing. It is God's doing. It belongs to Him. Our confidence then should rest upon Him. Not upon my doing or my obedience or my performance, but upon him, because it belongs to him. The rich young ruler had the same problem of no assurance of salvation. He ran to Jesus and got on his knees and asked, Good master, what good things must I do to have eternal life? He was a Jew. He's been in the church all his life. He was a leader. He had a high position in the church. He may have been the leader of the AYS department in the conference. Yet, he had no assurance of salvation. Good master. What good things must I do, he asked, that I may be sure that I have eternal life. Here was the root of his problem. Salvation for the Jew was based upon good works. That good works being obedient to the law. Jesus was trying to make this young man see clearly the reason for his lack of assurance. Jesus said to him, why call me good? There is none good but one, that is God. This young man was not trying to boost Christ's ego. 
by exaggerating the facts that he was good. He really and truly saw goodness in Christ that led him to believe that this was indeed the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus sought to bring out clearly what was deep in his heart. Why call me good when there is only one good, which is God? Jesus was saying to the young man what his heart was telling him. This is the Messiah. This is God in the flesh. The only one who is good, who can save you, who can give you assurance of salvation. Okay, said Jesus, if you want assurance of salvation, keep the commandments. He said, which? Jesus pointed to the ten. He replied, all these have I kept. For my youth, what lack I yet? Now, this young man really, he really uh, began to sound like an Adventist. He had been in the church all his life. He had kept the commandments from the time he was a, a, you know, a youth. He had followed all the rules of the church. Yet, what lack I? I have no assurance of salvation. What lack I? I can easily be in the second resurrection. What lack I? Jesus said to the Adventist Jew, if you really want assurance of salvation, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Now here was the secret for the young man to truly have assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation is not found in keeping the commandments. Assurance of salvation is not found in keeping the Sabbath. It is not found in obeying the rules. Assurance of salvation is found in Christ. Amen. It is found in believing, receiving, and abiding in Christ. Assurance of salvation cannot be based on keeping the commandments. My obedience to the Lord does not save me or give me assurance of salvation. The young man been doing that all his life. My assurance must be based solely and completely upon Christ. He is my righteousness. Right. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20 tells us. Jesus Christ speaking. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. The one thing that gives us assurance of salvation that removes guilt and fear from the heart is righteousness. The Jews thought that they could obtain righteousness by keeping the law. They were never successful at it. The Gentiles were successful in obtaining righteousness. Let's see how they obtain righteousness. 
Yes, I heard someone mention the text, Romans 9, 30 to 32. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone. Israel failed miserably to obtain righteousness because they sought it by trying to keep the law. The Gentiles attained unto righteousness by receiving Christ. Righteousness comes not by trying to obey. Righteousness comes through Christ. Through faith in Christ. Jesus, is, Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He kept the law of righteousness perfectly. So we look to him and not to the law. Many have said, I believed in Jesus, but I am still sinning. I abide in Jesus, but I'm still sinning. There must be something is to be done for me to obtain or to attain unto righteousness. It cannot be just believing. There must be something I must do. I need to try to obey the law. Indeed, to go fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. I need to live my life clean each and every day. I need to try harder. To keep the law. I need to try harder to not sin. This is the trap. That many Seventh day Adventists find themselves in. They look to their performance. And see that they are not living up to the standard of righteousness. So they try harder. To obey the law. They try harder to not sin. In the case of my brother, he just about had enough. He just about done trying to obey the law. He said that he has done everything yet he is afraid that he may end up in the second resurrection. What should I say to him? Don't give up. Keep trying. Keep pressing on the upward way. Hold on. Those words sounds good. But in his situation, it only encourages him to try harder to obey the law in order to have eternal life. Seven. Bread when we need. What we need and what most Seventh Day Adventists need is to remove their eyes from upon the law of righteousness. That's the Ten Commandments. And to place their eyes upon the one who is their righteousness. And that one is Jesus. If we can learn to do that. 
If we can learn to, 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 to keep our eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, Beloved, you will, you can be assured. You can be sure that you will have that assurance of salvation. Because Jesus is our righteousness. I present before you Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. Here, the Apostle Paul declares, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The gospel reveals the character of God. If you can believe the gospel, you will receive the righteousness of God. If you can believe, you will receive. The gospel it is, and in fact the power of God unto salvation. To as many as receive him, to them give he power. Amen. Power to become sons and daughters of God. Amen. Power to overcome. Power to live Amen. holy lives. The gospel reveals the character of God and it is this character of his which he wants to give us. He wants to impute it in our heart. His character. His righteousness. And this is revealed in the gospel. And if we can believe the gospel. We are in fact believing in the righteousness of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us exactly what the gospel is. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If he keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless he believe in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which also I received, how that Christ died for all sins, according to the scripture. That's the gospel in a nutshell, Elder. The good news that Christ died for our sins. And if we can believe that, if we can receive that, then the righteousness of Christ comes along with it. Right. And this is the righteousness that gives us assurance of our salvation. Amen. This gospel is the good news that Christ died for our sins. Amen. And in dying for our sins, it is the same as declaring Christ forgave our sins. He died for our sins. He paid the full penalty. He paid the full penalty. He paid the debt. He exhausted the penalty. Amen. No more penalty left. Beloved, that is forgiveness. So whenever we read the gospel that Christ died for our sins, it is the same as declaring that Christ forgave our sins. He paid the debt fully and completely. And this gospel, this good news, is what Paul delivered to the Corinthians. He delivered the good news that Christ forgave their sins. And beloved, they received it. 
And they, they, and they now walk in it. They stand in it. They stand in the confidence of the gospel, of the good news that Christ forgave their sins. Amen. And the apostle Paul says, and as long as you keep this in mind, in your memory, ye shall be saved. Amen. As long as they believe this good news, beloved, it will, it will it not only save them, but it will keep them saved Amen. until the day of judgment. How things would have been different. How things would have been different. If the rich young ruler. Had submitted himself to the righteousness. That he saw in Jesus Christ. He could have had exactly what he wanted. Assurance of salvation. The one thing that prevented him from submitting to Christ's righteousness was his wealth, his riches. His riches stood in the way. And beloved, that's our problem today. Our riches is also standing in the way it is preventing us from receiving the righteousness of Christ. Christ declare in Revelation chapter 3, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am what? I am rich. And increase in goods. And have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. They say as a man thinking in it, think it in his heart. So is he. So here we have God's remnant church in these last days, Laodicean church, thinking that they are rich and increase in goods and have need of nothing. Indeed, we think like this young ruler who was rich his riches prevented him from obtaining righteousness. His riches prevented him from submitting himself to Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that he went away sorrowful. When Christ said to him, come, follow me. Go sell all that you have and come, follow me. He went away sorrowful. He went back to his old ways. There must be another way to earn righteousness. There must be another way. Let me continue to keep the law. That is because he was rich. He failed to see and appreciate and surrender himself to the righteousness of Christ. And this is the condition of God's church today. We think that we are rich and no need of and in need of nothing. Jesus is warning his people. He's saying to us, your our law keep him is nauseating to him. You see, beloved, we are neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm. Cold works, 
combined with warm works, with hot works, beloved, brings about a lukewarm works. And cold works are usually works of the flesh. Hot works are works of faith, works of the spirit. But works that are lukewarm are works of the law. Trying to keep the law to be saved. Those are lukewarm works. And this is a problem with the Laodicean church in these last days. Our works are neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm. We are trying to get into heaven by not the righteousness of Christ, but by trying to keep the law. You may say in your heart, no, far from it. I'm not, I'm not doing that. But then, is Jesus wrong in saying to the church in the last days, I know thy works? That it is neither cold nor hot. Jesus is advising the church in these last days. Look, I will spew you out because I cannot accept works of the law. What you need is to buy from me gold tried in fire. You need a robe of righteousness. You need my righteousness. And I am willing to give that to you. Jesus is indeed our righteousness. And because we have failed, we have failed to receive our righteousness from him. We have failed to see and appreciate the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have failed to, to, to really surrender our hearts to what he has accomplished for us. We have failed, beloved, to really love him for what he has done. Because of that failure, His love, His righteousness cannot be imputed in our hearts. We now must seek to get that righteousness through obeying the law. And beloved, that will never work. Israel tried, the Jewish people tried, and they're still trying it today. And they are not successful. Neither will we. So today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Jesus wants to give you his righteousness so that you will have assurance of salvation. Amen. That's the only way we will have assurance. He who have began that good work in us is able to complete it. He is able to keep us from falling through his righteousness. His love must become our love. His glory must be in our hearts. His goodness, his perfect obedience must be ours. And we don't get it by trying, we get it by believing. Believing and submitting our hearts to him. So the Lord has brought us here today. So that we may believe. So that we may receive. His righteousness in our hearts. Whoever you are. God wants to give us that peace that assurance of salvation 
based upon not our obedience, but based upon his obedience. Amen. Based upon his righteousness. Amen. Do you want that righteousness? Amen. Freely ye have received. Freely give. He gives it freely. We only have to believe. Believe with all our hearts. And abide in him. And we will have that assurance that no matter what happened to us, we will see him face to face. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? When in rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. Amen. May God help us that we will believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we will believe in the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. That righteousness which will give us assurance of salvation. God bless you. Amen. Amen.